All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we are upgrading my office network to 100 gig fiber. Right now, this is capable of doing 25 gig because that's all I've got in the switch. But this is OM3 fiber, which is easily capable of running 100 gig networks really easily. It's only a 30 meter run. And so it's gonna be very easy to upgrade later on to this right here. This right here is my network distribution. This is what I'm gonna hook up all my ethernet cables to and everything like that. And we're hooking it up to my server rack, which has my NASes, my internet, all that kind of stuff. And the real advantage of the setup is you kind of can separate out your two main pieces. This right here, once I get everything hooked up, it's really not gonna be moving. I'm not adding new servers, I'm not adding new switches, I'm not really changing this a ton. I'll be doing things bit by bit, but for the most part, it's not gonna change that much. Whereas my server rack right there is going to be constantly updating. Every time I get a new server, all that kind of stuff, and we can really section it off. If you actually followed me back when I did this in Huntsville, I did a very similar thing. That was with my house, and we actually turned my laundry room into a network distribution center. We're doing the exact same thing here, but they are much, much closer located. So my grand plan for this setup is to run all my ethernet cables right into here. So I'm gonna do all my ethernet runs in there, my PoE, my 10 gig, all that great stuff is all going to end up in here. And as you can see, I've already started with four of them. Then to get the uplinks, I've got two of them right now because there are two switches in here. One that takes a 25 gig setup and one that takes a 10 gig setup. It is the Unify Enterprises. One's the XG24. That's the one that has 10 gig RJ45 ports and 25 gig uplinks, which is why it's really important for us to be running fiber for this. And then the other one is just the Enterprise PoE 24 port with 10 gig uplinks SFP plus. I bought one of these and Unify sent me one of these and I've been using these things for a really long time. And then right below it, we have my PDU from Unify as well. And it is essentially going to just allow me to monitor everything and reboot stuff as required, as well as it looks very, very nice. If you look, <laughs> we have this black cable right here. That is actually currently a SFP plus DAT cable that I just mounted on the wall for the short time being because I just needed this thing to get the network up and running so it would be hooked up, but we're gonna be replacing it with these guys right here and we're gonna do it in a really nice and clean way. So this right here is a keystone panel. This is a fiber keystone patch panel, which makes it so easy to use. We're basically going to be plugging two of these in to this keystone patch panel right here and plugging in the fiber on the other end. That way, we can move stuff around and we don't have to constantly be handling the fiber. Instead, we are going to just handle short fiber runs to plug and unplug, which means that if something does get broken, I don't have to redo these runs. Instead, I just need to get another half foot fiber, which is way easier to replace and is gonna make this look really clean. I've got four of these, two in this, two in that, as well as a bunch of other, because I'm also gonna be doing 25 gig fiber to my computer. And for now, we're just gonna be using these. I'm also planning on running at least one or two PoE runs, but we will see if that happens here. Now, luckily, this is going to be a way easier operation than what I ever did in Huntsville, because these are drop ceilings. We have ceiling tiles. Ugh. It makes it really easy for us to run these cables, and I'm just going to be running these over these. This right here is what's called LC multi-mode fiber. It's essentially two fibers and it is an OM3 class fiber. You don't need to know too much about that, but whenever you're buying fiber, there's a lot of things you need to make sure are the same. And if you are buying fiber to do runs like this, unless you wanna spend a lot of money on equipment, just get pre-terminated fibers, which is what these are. If you look, these already have the LC connectors on the end of them, which makes this really, really, really easy. There's no splicing of fiber required or any of the equipment required for that. People will tell you it's easy to do. It's easy to do if you have $10,000 worth of equipment. It is not an easy thing to do for splicing fiber. And honestly, it's cheap as can be to get pre-spliced fiber. So there's no reason not to. I would just recommend doing that. And then you can just use connectors like this to manage all of your connections. So the plan for this is actually to run it through the ceiling tile and from here all the way into my server rack right there. It is not that far of a run. These are 30 meter fiber cables, so we're gonna have a lot excess. And we're just going to basically put it up on the ceiling, 
Luckily, fiber is not as delicate as you think it is. It's pretty delicate, but you can actually mess with it a fair amount more than I originally expected. And we're going to be getting it plugged in the rack. We're gonna have a lot excess plugged in. This is fiber I got for another project a while ago. And so I'm going to have a lot left over and I'm probably going to just try to zip tie it up in the ceiling somewhere just so it stays out of the way. All right, well, at this point, you're just gonna have to wish me luck and we're gonna start moving around some fiber. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is add in these LC connectors. And then I'll just take out my network. Nobody's working right now anyway. And now I just gotta figure out how to get this over through the ceiling tile. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you'll probably just see a little bit of B-roll of me doing that here. All right, so now that is all out of the way. We actually have everything hooked on up and it was actually not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. It's a giant mess up there in the ceiling tile, but you know what? It is what it is. At one point I am considering on getting like a set cable. They sell cables that are like 12 cables in one. So that'd be six total LC connectors. And I might just get one of those cause it's a mess up there. I'm not very good at this, but Honestly, it's just my ceiling tiles, so it is not that big of a deal, and it should serve me for quite a while. So now, we're actually gonna be able to get rid of the existing connection, and take these cables on through, and hook them on up. So what I did here is I also have 24 corresponding 24, and 23 corresponding 23 on the two patch panels. Should just hopefully keep it a little bit cleaner and easier to figure out. All right, so now those are in and now's the moment of truth. I'm just gonna go grab a couple of short cables. We're gonna go ahead and see if these things negotiate. Look at me, prepared right there. So 24 is my 25 gig SFP28 connection and 23 is the 10 gig SFP plus connection, both going to that aggregation pro switch. So I've got 24 SFP plus connections and four SFP 28 connections, which are 25 gig. Now, well, these are a little bit long, probably need to get some shorter ones, but well, it'll at least let us know if this is working for now. And we got a link light. And it is negotiating to SFP 28, as in 25 gigabit. All right, so that is that one. And now to take on the switch. They no longer need that connection between the two of them. All right, well, other than definitely needing a little bit of strain relief on this, we are all set. So I gotta get these cables cleaned up here. And honestly, I'm just gonna stick them in the ceiling. And we'll eventually tie some of that stuff off and get some better strain relief. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as is because there's a whole lot more work to do. I have a 25 gig uploading to this thing, which means that this 10 gigabit switch is now able to have three connections pretty much going full tilt at 10 gigabit. And so we're not gonna run into any bottlenecks with that at all because honestly, that is as much as I can throw at it with this workflow because the majority of my actual servers that are communicating the fastest are actually on the other switch on the rack on that aggregation switch. So we've actually got a very good network design here. It's essentially a hub and spoke method because these two switches, even though they're next to each other, don't talk to each other directly. Instead, they're going to an aggregation switch all uplinked. So if one of them is going really hard and having a lot of traffic through it, it will have no effect on the other one. For this office, we're honestly never gonna be hitting that, except we will probably hit it when I'm doing some stress testing on some servers, 
which is why it's nice to have this, and also it's a lot of fun. But for an actual business who has a lot of users, especially video production houses, this is really important stuff to think about, making sure that people can really hit the NAS and your NASs and not be slowing each other down when times are getting really tough. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. We are now set on up. If you have any other questions, go ahead and put those down in the comments below and subscribe because I'm gonna be doing a ton more of these. Also, if you wanna hire me, I'm a consultant. I do IT startups all the time. There's a link for that down in the description below. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.